Hurricane Florence is here. How the Carolinas and other nearby states are handling this massive storm. This is News 3 at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 on this Friday. The eye of Hurricane Florence has made landfall at Wrights Beach, North Carolina. It's hitting the coast with winds of about 90 miles an hour. The storm surge also filling streets with ocean water and has left hundreds of thousands of people without power. Mole Lange has the latest on conditions from North Carolina. Florence hammered the Carolinas as it slammed ashore as a Category 1 hurricane. It's 90 mile an hour winds toppling this gas station canopy. A 10 foot storm surge inundated the town of Bellhaven, North Carolina. It's the same in Newburn, where rescue crews have pulled at least 200 people from their homes. Dozens more are still waiting for rescue. I'm looking on the street and I'm, I'm amazed. I've never seen this kind of damage here. Florence knocked out power to around 500,000 homes and businesses, most of them in North Carolina. Our power just went out instantly. We weren't expecting it. It was way too early. We were trying to charge our things for the storm to come, and uh, it already went out. Now because this storm is moving so slowly, forecasters say rainfall could set records over the next few days. As you can see, water levels here on the intercoastal waterway are rising, and the fear throughout the Carolinas is that flooding may become catastrophic. Some of the river levels are going to be forecast to exceed the historic levels. Florence's outer bands began attacking the Carolinas yesterday, pushing a surge of water inland. The rushing water toppled a cameraman in North Topsail Beach, North Carolina. More than one and a half million people were ordered to evacuate. Thousands spent the night in shelters, and now many wonder what will be left when they return. Mola Lenghi, CBS News, Wilmington, North Carolina. And a tornado watch is in effect in more than a dozen North Carolina counties. Let's head over to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Chris Reese, you often don't think of tornado activity with a hurricane, but it's pretty common. That's right. And I, I've always, as a kid, I always wondered, you know, what's stronger, a hurricane or a tornado? But hurricane takes the trump card there just because they begin to spawn tornadoes. And especially in that northern quadrant, just north of the eye, that's where you're going to see a lot of tornadoes. And yesterday, some of those were moving upwards of, get this, tornadoes moving 85 miles per hour. That is a fast moving tornado and those very fast moving bands. Now the hurricane itself very slow moving. In fact, this loop right here shows you essentially the past 12 hours and you can really see that, that center of circulation has not moved much for the past 12 hours. The same area is getting pounded by the rain, pounded by the wind that's gradually going to work its way south and then up through the Carolinas. So this is only just beginning folks. There is a lot of wind and rain to go through for our friends in the southeast. Now that puts things into perspective. It's a beautiful day right here in south central Wisconsin. The temperatures have made it to 80 degrees. The winds are calm. It is a little bit humid though. Dew points are in the 60s. We do have some upper 70s as you work your way closer towards the lake shore. Juneau at 77, Waukesha also at 77. Here's the dew points though in the 60s. Dew points into the 70s as you work way farther to the west. That is where the southerly wind is a bit more pronounced. But as we go through the next 12 hours, dew points should stay the same. Sky conditions should stay the same as well. We'll see temperatures falling into the upper 50s overnight after a high of 82 degrees today. All right, and things are not over in this in the Carolinas. They are not over. I'll have another update on what more they're looking at coming up in our main weather segment. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. Governor Scott Walker is announcing two new programs to help people and businesses recover from our flooding this summer. Wisconsin's Housing and Economic Development Authority is launching a new $2 million program that will provide no interest loans up to $10,000 for repairing homes. The Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, meanwhile, is launching a $2 million program to help small businesses recover. Anyone interested in a weed alone can call one 800 562 55 Four, six. The Dane County Sheriff's Office is looking into a crash involving a car and a house. A car drove into a home north of Cottage Grove on County Road TT shortly after 6 o'clock this morning. One person was hurt, but we don't know the extent of those injuries. News 3 is working on learning more about this crash, and we'll have an update for you on Channel3000.com. Former Trump campaign chair Paul Manafort has pleaded guilty 
to two federal charges as part of a cooperation deal with prosecutors. The deal requires him to cooperate fully and truthfully with special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. The charges against Manafort are related to his Ukrainian consulting work, not Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election, which is the central issue in the special counsel's investigation. Today's move gives Mueller another successful conviction while allowing Manafort to avoid facing another costly public trial. Manafort was convicted last month of eight financial crimes in a separate trial. The White House says Manafort's decision to plead guilty and cooperate with Mueller is, quote, totally unrelated to President Trump. You have to wait a little bit longer to tune into an upcoming debate between Governor Scott Walker and his Democratic challenger Tony Evers ahead of this November's election. It was originally scheduled for October 5th, but the Wisconsin Broadcasters Association announced it'll be moved to October 19th instead. Both candidates have agreed to take part. And part of Madison's Willie Street will be closed tomorrow for the Willie Street Fair. The areas impacted are between South Patterson and South Ingersoll Streets from noon to 10.30 tomorrow. And then on Sunday, between South Livingston and South Ingersoll from 7 a.m. until 10.30 p.m. A handful of other blocks will also be closed for an hour from 11 to noon Sunday for a parade. We have a list of all those closures on our website, channel3000.com. And today is the start of Cheese Days in Monroe. The city's downtown will once again turn into a festival grounds for the weekend, which means much of the area around the courthouse square will be closed off. You'll be able to visit plenty of vendors and, of course, get your fill of cheese curds through Sunday. Cheese Days has been held since the early 1900s, celebrating cheesemakers and Wisconsin cheeses in all of their glory. That is a great time. Madison Short Stack Eatery was chosen to the Allied Business of the Year Award by the Wisconsin LGBT Chamber. The Chamber of Can't decide if you feel like ribs or pork chops. If that's the case, we've got the answer. And these are super saucy.
The other day, we got a question on our website from a couple who asked if country-style ribs are really ribs at all. You see, the husband insisted that they must be, since they usually have bones. And his wife said, uh-uh, they're way too meaty to be ribs. Well, they're both sort of right. Usually they have bones, yet country-style ribs aren't ribs at all. As you can see, they're more like a pork chop than a rib, since they're meatier, they're less fatty, and they're not cut from the rib section. And the nice thing about them, they can be cooked on the stovetop. And if we want, we can finish them off on the grill. All we do is put three to four pounds of country-style ribs in a deep skillet or a soup pot. Now, to give these lots of flavor, we'll throw together a homemade barbecue sauce, which is simply some ketchup, steak sauce, chopped garlic, and onions, brown sugar, a bit of Worcestershire sauce, and a splash of water. We pour that over the ribs and let them simmer. Once they're tender, they're done. And these are so good, it doesn't matter if they're officially considered ribs or not. The recipe for our saucy country style ribs is online now. The only question is, do we eat these with a fork or our fingers? Well, if you know me, it's pretty obvious. After all, I wouldn't want to miss any of the Ooh, it's so good. All right, Howard, thank you. Another sunny and dry day for us here in southern Wisconsin. Chris Reese talking about our next chance of rain after the break in our first alert forecast. Our call for action phone bank is open right now, ready to take on your consumer issues and call our hotline volunteers to help you with any consumer complaints. The number is 608-270-2833. The service open every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between 11 and 1. Well, consumers cut back in August and billionaire Jeff Bezos puts the spotlight on charity. Here's Diane King Hall with today's Money Watch Report.
Americans cut back on buying cars and clothes in August. The Commerce Department says retail sales inched up just a tenth of a percent. A rise in online spending helped mute the blow. Target says it will hire more than 120,000 people for the holiday season. That's a 20 percent increase from last year. The chain says the seasonal hires will stock shelves, work the registers, and pack online orders. Target says it will hold hiring events at its stores next month. Ten years ago, many employees of Lehman Brothers went to bed thinking they still had a job. The next day, September 15, 2008, the once powerhouse bank failed. The startling demise of Lehman Brothers triggered a massive financial crisis, leading to unemployment levels of 10 percent at its peak. Since then, the U.S. economy and Wall Street has made a stunning recovery, with unemployment now at 3.9 percent. And the richest man in modern history, Jeff Bezos, is launching a $2 billion charitable fund. The founder of Amazon tweeted about the philanthropic commitment to fund existing nonprofits that help homeless families. Bezos also plans to create a network of nonprofit preschools in low income communities that will accept students at no charge. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to CBSMoneyWatch.com. At the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Diane King Hall. Diane, thank you. The Dow Industrial is down 40 points at the noon hour. The NASDAQ down as well at 22 points. Let's check in now with Q106 Farm Director Pam Yankee on this Friday. Thank goodness we've got the weather with those kinds of numbers on Wall Street, Mark. Mine aren't much better, I'm afraid, as a Friday moves forward. A lot of talk in the marketplace about the proposed talks between the United States and China. We got another round of tariffs that could be dropped on the marketplace any time. Uh, there were some talks earlier in the month of August, but this next round is expected to involve some higher level uh, cabinet officials from China. So paying a little bit of attention to that. Obviously, you can't knock our weather in the upper Midwest, but there's still some concern in the marketplace on how much damage uh, hurricane flow is going to cause along the coastline. See, that's a big area as far as livestock production. Uh, North Carolina is the number one hog producer, uh, big in poultry, both North and South Carolina. And if those animals uh, go away, if barns collapse, that is going to have a ricochet impact on our grain demand as well. So like I said, paying a lot of attention to those markets. Also, we're finding out that Argentina, in response to all those tariffs, is planning on planting more soybeans next year versus corn, uh, just the opposite of what's happening here in the United States. They are having to scramble quick to try to meet all the demand for soybeans that China has brought to that market now that the United States is kind of uh, having a problem with uh, the tariff situation. Dairy markets had a problem again today. Barrel cheese down another nickel at 142. 40 pound block cheese dropped a penny and a half at 160 and a half. Double A butter unchanged today at 223 and a half per pound. Again, got to keep an eye on that split between barrel and block cheese. What are we now? More than 18 cents difference when normally the market only sees three. I talked to uh, the president of Ellsworth uh, Co op Creamery earlier this week. He said, Every time that you see a spread larger than three cents, that's money coming out of dairy farmers' pockets. And that's not what we need right now, Mark. So like I said, thank goodness we've got good news in the weather department to tide us over till Monday. Absolutely. It's going to be a warm Packer game, too, for you up Woo, there. Ooh, yeah. That's in many good. different ways, it's going to be warm. <laughs> yes, it is. We'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see if Rogers right. plays or not. That's right. All well, right. That's the big question. We'll see you Monday. Thank you, Pam. All right, go Pack. Mm -hmm. Chris is here now with our forecast. Anything is better than what's going on in the Carolinas right now. That's right. It really puts things into perspective when you think about the weather that they are facing. Of damage in a lot of places, especially with the amount of wind and water that she's dropping. Now, right now, Hurricane Flow, as a lot of folks have called her, has winds of 75 miles per hour. Her overall pressure is rising, and that's because she did make landfall. So we are starting to see a slight bit of weakening, but as it moves southward, it's about to head back over towards open water. Now, let's focus on this. Here are some of those tornado warnings coming back in north of the center of circulation and and she has really put down a lot of water this morning. In fact, this is just the past 12 hours showing you some places on the coast of 12 inches of rain or 11 inches of rain. But now that that center of circulation is starting to move to the south, you are getting an onshore flow once again. So moisture being 
fueled in by the Atlantic Ocean. This is also going to be increasing that storm surge. Once again, some folks could see upwards of nine feet of storm surge. Once you get above nine feet of storm surge and upwards towards 12 feet of storm surge, this is where that water is suddenly over the first floor of your home, making it into the second floor of your home. And that's why this is going to be a dire situation because they already saw the storm surge last night. Now they are seeing more of that. And as we go through about the next 36 hours or longer, this storm's just sitting around that same area, bringing the wind, but also bringing a lot of rain as well. This is not how much rain we will see total. This is additional rainfall an additional 15 to 30 inches of rain is possible on some of these spots. That's going to go inland towards Charlotte up through the upper line. Appalachian Mountains as well. So we are just truly beginning to see the effects of Florence. She is going to be around all weekend. So we will feel lucky with that sunshine that we have out there. A few decorator clouds are present as well. Our temperature here in Madison, 80 degrees right now with calm winds. Dew points are in the 60s, so it's starting to feel a little bit humid out there. Janesville's at 82 degrees right now. Nothing coming in from Monroe, but we go over to Mineral Point. They have that temperature of 82 as well. Some 70s is beginning to show up, but as we go through the rest of the day, we should top out right around 82 degrees right here in Madison, and then we'll see a pretty comfortable night, a nice evening, and then overnight lows with clear skies falling into the upper 50s before we really repeat this same process as we go into tomorrow. So if you head out to the Badgers game, 81 by kickoff, 78 by the fifth quarter. So it'll be a bit humid though, so wear the shorts. Just kind of wear that summer clothing. Now as we go towards next week, we do begin to shake things up a little bit. A series of fronts is going to come through. That'll be bringing rain chances back into our forecast. You'll notice those Monday night. We'll see some of those rain chances on Tuesday as well before more rain chances come in as we get you late Tuesday night and towards Wednesday. 82 degrees as we go through this afternoon. It will be mostly sunny and of course a bit humid as well. We'll take you through the next seven days and you'll notice those rain chances coming back as early as Monday night and then through Tuesday we'll get a break Wednesday into Thursday more rain chances as well. And so we are starting to see one of those patterns that's going to be wet again, but it does not look anywhere near as wet as the patterns we have seen lately. It's just one of those situations where we're starting to really transition and the season some cooler air starting to make its way down and it's going to bring some rain chances with it too. And this is, I mean, you know, some people are comparing this to Harvey down in Texas, but not quite as much moisture available, is there? Well, there actually is. Okay. This is going to be one of those situations where you saw it happen with Harvey and you're thinking, wow, this there's no way this could happen again, but actually it could. And one of the things to put uh, in reference there because a lot of pe folks are saying, oh, it's just a category one. Well, Harvey did most of its damage as a tropical storm, and then Sandy was barely a category one. Another really powerful system in Houston's history was Allison. That was a tropical storm as well. So a lot of folks think wind, but what the hurricane scale does not take into account is the amount of moisture, rain, and storm surge that can come on and, it. And that's where most people lose their lives. Is yes, the flooding. that is the deadliest and most dangerous part of a hurricane. All right, well, on a lighter note, it's my mother's Florence's birthday today. So <laughs> all right. there you go. Florence is all around. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. There's more to come on News 3 at noon. Up next, it is a new way to work out. After the break, we're looking into the benefits of float fitness. That's next at noon. News
Well, there's a new fitness trend that's keeping people at the pool year round. CBS's Gwen Baumgartner talks about float fitness. Reaching down, driving up. It's an exercise that requires strength, balance, and a bit of humility. James Simpkin is trying float fit for the first time, switching up his normal fitness routine of weights and a treadmill. When you see people do it, it looks, yeah, I could do that. And then when you actually do it, you're like, okay, let's try and get down and up at least once without falling in the pool. The exercise replicates yoga on water, but there's nothing easy or zen about this workout. It's high intensity interval training. It's half an hour, so we make sure that we just keep people moving on and off the board and in and out of the water. The glass is filled with moves like planks and squats that are done on an inflatable mat. The base offers more support than a pool float, but not much. Thighs burning, calves shaking. One by one, people fall into the pool, including me. Those tumbles into the water burn calories too. Fitness experts say you'll gain more benefits from a routine done on water than by doing the same exercise in the gym. It's a massive workout. Even just standing without any movement whatsoever challenges the stability of the body so much. James says while it's certainly challenging... You need to shock the body, and this was a shock to my body. He finds it fun trying to keep his head above water. Gwen Baumgartner, CBS News, London. Interesting. Summer weekend on tap. Summer weekend. It's going to be a beautiful summer weekend as well. So if there's any pools still open, temperatures will be in the 80s. It'll be a little humid as well. All right, we'll see you back here at 4. Have a great afternoon.